Hello everyone, welcome to the GY Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on environmental geography. So in this session on environmental geography, we are going to continue with the last session that we did was environmental hazards and its remedial measures part 1. So this is part 2. Now the remaining of the environmental hazards we are going to discuss and also the remedial measures. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about environmental hazards and remedial measures part 2. In the previous part we talked about earthquakes, floods and cyclone and now in this part we are going to learn about the landslides, the drought and pollution. So if you look into the same thing luck factor that is talking about the hazards, the Arabic word that is al-zahar which basically means the dice. It means it is dicey. So anything could happen. That is about luck factor, right? So that is the basic idea from which this idea of hazard comes in. And looking into the landslides and its management. Now remember, this is one image where you see this every year in Himalayan region, especially we find so many cases of landslides. Look at this particular road here, which is going like this. And this entire slope has completely fallen here in the river. This is the classic example of a landslide which is triggered by several impacts of a road construction, slope angle, removal of all those trees from the slopes or vegetation from the slopes or destabilization of slope because of some other reason. So what happens? Rapid sliding of this large mass of rock, soil and mud along the slope of hill, mountain and highland is termed as landslide that we basically know. And in mass wasting lecture in geomorphology, we have already talked about various kinds of landslides, various factors related to it. So you can go there and watch in details as well. So landslides may occur due to heavy rainfall on mountain slopes, having loose soil and debris, right, due to excavation of or due to deposition of loose ash after volcanic eruption as well, right? So what happens that sometimes landslides may occur due to the earthquakes as well because of the sudden shake in the earth, right? So landslides can be a resultant of water saturation as well as slope modifications because of human actions, because of natural reasons and also earthquakes as we have talked about. So if you want to learn about the various techniques, how to stabilize this place, that's what is important, right? So that is the remedial measures. So techniques for reducing the landslide and mudslide risks is to create certain structures and also to stabilize the slope. So selecting of a flat land or stable slope is important. Construction channels and drainage systems, retention structures, walls, right? Many places you'll find many walls being created right to protect this particular road right planting ground cover that is also important soil reinforcement using geosynthetic materials this is being done in many parts of himalayan region as well and avoiding cut and fill building sites that's important then redirecting water that might affect steep slopes would greatly decrease the landslides so what is important here is on these slopes vegetation water all these things which are important factor or attributes needs to be taken care right also some kind of walls can be constructed created but at the same time it's very important to geoengineer the structures the roads or the planning needs to be taken care right that's important then some areas that are at high risk of landslides in the world what are those areas? Remember, areas where wildfires or human modification of land have destroyed the vegetation. So if there is loss of vegetation, there is a chance of landslide. Areas where landslides have occurred before, that is an evidence that more landslides could come. Then steep slopes, obviously angle of repose, we remember, we talked about that in geomorphology. So steep slopes and areas at bottom of slopes or canyons are most affected than slopes that have been altered for construction of buildings, roads. Now remember this particular slope. So unless you plan it properly with this check walls and engineered structure, there could be a landslide here, right? So areas where surface runoff is directed is also one of the potential areas. Now what happens that to build these structures, there has to be certain engineering work happening, certain guidelines have to be issued. Right. So there are also some precautions that could be taken before intense storms as well and rainfall as well. Right. So assume that steep slopes and areas burned by wildfires are vulnerable to landslides and debris flow. Right. Also, there is important understanding or learning of landslide or the concept of landslide and the way it works 
right the concept basically means the research has to be integrated it means a country's geologist geographer planning department state geological surveys they have to put together all the knowledge of how land slides what kind of rock structure is there in the area right how much is rainfall there so how much can this slope withstand is it fit for construction or not right all these things have to be taken care local authorities have to also plan the evacuation and as well as the emergency plans right if you have seen the rohtang tunnel construction there are lot many contingency and emergency plans as well with the same construction right because that's a landslide prone area avalanche prone area right so developing this particular plan is important and also emergency communication system is also important so remember it's more of precautionary principle that comes into the picture here when we are talking about management of landslides then looking into the drought and its management now what is drought first of all we must understand so the literally meaning of drought is basically extended period of dry weather condition which is specially injurious to crops simple way if you want to understand this is what is drought but there are several other definitions which also talk about the different perceptions of drought so meteorologists define it as rainless or rain deficient period agronomist consider drought as condition of shortage of moisture for crop production economist view it as shortage of rainfall which adversely affects agricultural production farmers consider drought as shortage of rainfall for critical operations and stages of crop growth so there are several ways of looking into drought right and drought if not managed properly and continued for long term in consecutive years it creates a situation of famine so remember drought is linked to famine situation as well right so what happens it aggravates poverty water scarcity famine internal displacement of people migration of people social breakdown and also what we have observed in india as farmer suicides in extended drought periods right because production failure right so it is also observed that malnutrition and famine could occur at a larger scale that is important so drought has something to do with food security as well right so that's important to understand so it is shortage in food grain production which leads to prolonged fall in food grain and that leads to massive scale of death rates of people as well right so that's where hunger index and food security are linked together with the drought situation then drought control measures if you want to learn so what are the basic measures now what have we been doing with the advent of technology we are now using drought forecasting system and using the gis techniques that is computer aided technologies to study the various ideas of drought we are trying to manage the situation so some of the measures to mitigate drought or remedial measures that we want to learn is listed here you can pause the video and you can read it for yourself so one of them is efficient use of rain water and rain harvesting that is important and remember tamil nadu is the first state which has made it mandatory to create rain water harvesting structures on the buildings that's also important then introduction of dry farming techniques lining of canals to prevent water loss avoidance of overcropping and also single cropping remember single cropping also leads to land degradation we have already talked in the previous lectures and then limiting the settlements in drought prone areas if there are more settlements there would be more requirement of water right so the water will go to the settlements and there will be less of water for irrigation of field and also there could be a scarcity in terms of the area in terms of land itself right so what happens with drought prone areas if there are more settlements it would lead to a, another catastrophic effect in terms of the famine right so introduction of horticulture plantation and also checking the desert migration by shelter built plantations these are some of the measures that we see in terms of the drought control measures right then looking into the environmental pollution aspect which is one of the major goals of sustainable development that we see to reduce this pollution so environmental pollution could be long term which is called also chronic and short term which are acute and also remember it is talking about the quality of life at the same time it lowers it right so basic idea of pollution what it is simply addition of harmful substances or process of contaminating the environment in simple way that is what is the pollution so substance which is contributes to the pollution of this environment is also known as pollutant so pollutant is any hazardous substance or any toxic substance may be solid liquid or gaseous substance that 
alters the normal environment situation maybe water maybe air maybe sound maybe light all those kinds of pollution that we are talking about so what you observe here is this statement the industrialization of our society the induction of motorized vehicles rapid urbanization explosion of human population harnessing natural resources as well as unplanned sewage waste is a big problem in urban areas these days right and when this sewage is being disposed of in river so we have river pollution right at huge level so these are the problems that we are facing in terms of environmental pollution now looking here the environmental pollution occurs as a resultant of energy conversions and the use of resources which leaves the by products and these by products are where in water soil or air if you look here right so this is where we are worried about so depending upon the area or the part of environment affected pollution may be broadly categorized so how can we categorize there are several kinds of pollution air water land noise radiation thermal also light pollution right so these are several ways of looking into pollution now control measures if you want to learn control measures for air pollution is of two fundamental approaches one is the preventive technique and one is the effluent control so when we are talking about prevention prevention is before the release of these toxic substances to air so what could be done using of those scrubbers these dry and wet collectors filters electrostatic precipitators which are installed in various you know industries which have chimneys and which also have the air quality control measurement at the same time so what could be done all these things have to be installed on those industries which are releasing the toxic substances in the air right providing greater height to the stacks so remember all these stacks or the vents where this air is being released so their greater height it means it will go to the greater distances and assimilate in the air and gradually settle so industry should be located in places as to minimize effects of pollution now one is the locational aspect of industry but remember for developing countries like india and others the space itself is a problem so if you want to industrialize you must take care of preventive measures rather than space measures so space measures would be only taken care when you have the large amount of land for a particular industry considering the topography and wind directions is also important now substitution of raw material now remember whatever raw material is being used so is the by product being released so if those raw materials we are which are producing which have been producing more pollutants in the air water so if they could be replaced by alternative solutions through technology then it could be potentially a remedial measure for air pollution now looking into the control measures for preventing water pollutions so we already know setting of effluent treatment plants right educating public water pollution act we already have right and strict enforcement is important and developing this economical method of water treatment as well is important and monitoring of water pollution at different places right so this is important then control measures for soil pollution so soil must be prevented or controlled through proper tree plantation runoff should be reduced and also waste from industry or domestic should not be dumped without treatment that's important and then use of synthetic fertilizers remember many places in the country are facing the problem of salinization problem of toxic chemical issues in the soil because of too much use of synthetic fertilizers right that's important so organic fertilizers natural fertilizers are recommended and then educating people making them aware unless that happens there is no remedy remember so recycling and reusing the industrial products domestic wastes can be minimized all these things are important and contribute to sustainable development goal as we know right so preventive measures for noise pollution one is the reduction one is banning one is creation of green cover there are three ways one is the first point is where the noise is coming from reduce it at the source so that's important also you can use ear plugs at abnormal noise situations right then banning of noise polluting vehicles no honking sign at every place that we see in the traffic controlling the vibrations of machines by lubricating them these are certain things that could be done and creation of green cover in road areas in the traffic and also many places where you have localities like hospitals like there could be old age homes right so all those areas which are sensitive areas must be sound free there are many airports which are now declared as noise free right so remember this is one of the aspects which is important in terms of preventive measures that could be 
taken. Then let's talk about managing the effects of radiation pollution. So if you remember the Three Mile Island nuclear power catastrophic explosion and you know the Chernobyl everybody knows the name of Chernobyl and many movies have been made on this name right so that's where radiation came into the picture right everybody started knowing about these nuclear weapons and the you know coming from already the world war ii situation coming from japan the concepts so preventive measures have to be taken care if there is a leak of radiation it's going to be a problem so preventive measures like radioactive nuclear waste cannot be treated by conventional method so they need to be heavily shielded right surface of storage sites need to be made right or abandoned salt mines deep caves could be utilized and radioactive wastes have half lives of hundreds to thousands of years so remember and to date no storage method has been found is absolutely infallible so it's very much a problem in current scenario when we are talking about going into the nuclear energy so it should be clean energy and it should have this you know proper disposable sites of those nuclear wastes that's important then thermal pollution now look at the industry which are polluting through heat transmission into the water right so fossil fuel usage nuclear electric power usage all these are leading to what these are leading to the discharge of hot water at many places in the vicinity you will find that there is a lot of problems because of this an ecological imbalance is being created major fishes are being killed right so increased temperature accelerates chemical biological processes and decreases the ability of water to hold oxygen so biological oxygen demand right chemical oxygen demand they alter this right that's important to understand and if you observe power plants that is thermal and nuclear chemical and other industries use a lot of water so most of this thermal pollution is related to heating of water right so this is one aspect and also the ectotherms which are those insects which are developing and they are actually creating a menace in many parts of the world as well because they can adapt with higher temperature and they are flooding the cities or industrial areas so rise of pests and insects because they are ectotherm so that is also happening in many parts of the world because of thermal pollution so now when we have completed the series on environmental hazards and remedial measures in the next lecture we'll be talking about environmental education so stay safe stay tuned all the best wishes